the voice of Long Beach, the one and only, Halftime Howie! everyone to Broadcasting on the Beach with Halftime Howie and tonight we're featuring a great concert. We have great music for you. So all for the music lovers out in Facebook and YouTube, you're going to be treated to great music. But before they perform, we'd like to get their personal stories, the men behind the music. So we're going to hear their stories first. We're going to start first on my left, uh, Aaron Holman. Aaron, you grew up in Oklahoma. Who was your early uh, music influences and when did you develop your passion for being a great musician? Uh, well, I started, my very first instrument was trombone. So some of my first idols were like J.J. Uh, Johnson, uh, mm -hmm. classic bop trombonist. He's like the trombone godfather in, jazz, in the jazz world. Uh, then I uh, went to college, started playing jazz, um, was a jazz studies major. Uh, we had a, a few guys that I really enjoyed come through and actually perform with the band and uh, was, were guest clinicians like uh, Conrad Herwig who's actually at Rutgers right now I think okay. and uh, he's world class and um, Robin Eubanks as well um, two of my favorite trombonists I actually got to meet and oh, wow. play very, a little bit with so very cool it's fun so how did the journey bring you from Oklahoma to Long Beach um, I started touring I, I uh, I started playing after I graduated on uh, cruise ships. I was a cruise ship trombonist in the orchestras and played all around the boat, um, various ensembles, and then the orchestra for the shows. Then, um, then after that, I started doing tours of uh, musical theater shows, so national tours of musicals. Uh, I did one of those. Um, I met the woman who I'm now married to, and she's from actually from Oceanside, um, just over, just across the way there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess I, I moved here for her, and also this the mu the music scene up here. It, it's awesome. All right. Yeah. My longtime friend Victor Peretz. Uh, Victor, who were some of your early music influences growing up in the great town of America? Well. I'm, I'm, I'm what you call an eclectic. I'm totally eclectic, but because I, I chose trombone, um, my, my early influences were, like much, much like Aaron's, um, were trombone players. So, um, um, of course, starting with, of course, the great Tommy Dorsey. Every, and, the, and, the, and, and Tommy Dorsey is the reason why I played trombone in the first place, because my father was a big Tommy Dorsey fan, and, he, and, he, and I knew that. And he never, my father never actually pushed me to play tr trombone, but but I knew that he liked Tommy Dorsey's trombone, and when it came time to choosing an instrument, I, I, I chose trombone. But So that was one, and then of course, um, th there, there's another guy named um, Irby Green, who I, when I found out about him early on, I, I, I couldn't stop listening to his records. And um, there's, a, there's another guy named um, Bill Watrous, who's, um, you know, m many people think he, he's, he's the greatest jazz trombone player alive right now. And then of course, uh, there's, um, there's another guy who's long gone who, who played with um, um, Louis Armstrong named Jack Teagarden, and he, he was an early, in fact, if you look at, if you read a lot of jazz history books, they credit Jack Teagarden with, with being um, the, 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 the inventor of modern jazz trombone, okay? So I listened to a lot of those guys, and, and I listened to a, a lot of other, like, you know, more modern people, you know, electric bands, you know, people like, um, Stevie Wonder and of course the Beatles and Rolling Stones and you know people like that James Taylor, Carol King. I mean, I, I, I so like I said in the beginning, I'm I'm totally eclectic. I really am. That's awesome. Now we have a mutual friend uh, known as Benoit Ben Metzger. Now he's got in Long Beach a really cool ukulele orchestra. Um, <laughs> I heard through the grapevine, Victor, that along with Aaron, you want to start a trombone orchestra. So to all those great trombone players in the woodwork, what's, uh, what's your goal and your message 
to make this a reality with you and Aaron leading the way to a trombone orchestra right here in the great city of Long Beach? Well, um, I'm not sure exactly how many trombone players we need, but um, I, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to pattern it around um, a, a series of records that Irby Green did called the 21 Trombones of Irby Green, where he had 21 trombones and obviously several of them played the bass lines, several of them played the tenor lines, and several of them played the, 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 the mid-range lines. <clears throat> I don't, I, I, don't, I don't think we can really find 21 trombone players in Long Beach that could do that. But, but a few more would be cool. A few more would be cool. We could, we could just do a, a, a smaller manageable uh, like trombone choir with, um, I mean, I'd be happy with nine, nine trombones. And we could do um, what, what uh, Ben does with um, the, the ukulele orchestra, which is um, he, he also has, guitar, he has guitars and he has um, uh, bass guitars and Yes, percussion. So we, we could do things like that to, to round it out so it's not all trombone. But I think it would be fun, and I, 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 I'd like to give it a try if there, are, you know, if there are enough trombone players out in, out in the Long Beach area that would like to do it. All right, and uh, Victor, you can reach him right on Facebook. Aaron's on Facebook. So uh, trombone players, you know you got two great contacts here. Now let's go our third member of our concert tonight. He uh, grew up in the Ukraine. His name is Denis Savoyev. And uh, Dennis, uh, this is going to be unique because we have a great trombone player, another trombone player. Aaron also does the guitar. But Dennis, uh, you grew up playing the flute. So talk about your early uh, music beginnings uh, growing up in the Ukraine. Thank you. So I grew up in Ukraine. Yes, I was born there. And my first time touching the flute was when I was five years old. At that time, I was in the kindergarten and they discovered some musical talents that I have, the pitch, and they told me, uh, to my mom actually, that I should try maybe doing some music instruments. At that time, my mom had a friend at some music school that was nearby, and they told me, oh, try the flute. It went pretty good for one year, and that was time for me to go to the school. And luckily, in my city, which is Lviv, on the west side of Ukraine, uh, we have this music special school that has 11 years of intensive music courses at the same time as elementary school. So there are only four schools like that uh, in Ukraine, and it's an old Soviet system for musicians. So I went to this school, and they accepted me as a flute player, and that's when my serious professional journey has begun. And so, probably mostly because of my mom, who was like a trained sportsman, she knows that, that you have to have good training, repetition, and rehearsals practice, that without practice you won't reach a success. So she was like pushing me to practice every day, and probably because of her, I'm sitting here and performing uh, for you tonight. Uh, so after I finished the, that school, I was awarded with a full scholarship to study in Moscow. That's when I moved uh, after the school and I've had an amazing five years to study there, with, met so many beautiful musicians, collaborated with them and grew as a musician. And then I've got an opportunity to move here to New York in the U.S. And here I am playing for you tonight. That's great. And um, you guys um, met for the first time tonight. And uh, I'd like to talk about uh, meeting Dennis and having you and Aaron playing with a flutist. It seemed like you guys, the chemistry was great. You guys, you guys the, the way you were practicing before the show, it seemed like you guys have been playing together for years. Talk about the way musicians, talented musicians, can just blend so nicely together. Well, um, we, we're, we're actually very lucky that um, uh, uh, Aaron is involved in this because Aaron has, a, a, I guess, a subscription you, you might call it to a, like a, a, a music um, um, subscription where he can um, download um, music music scores to. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I should say every. Um, published um, music uh, song, but certainly a lot of them. And um, 
we were, I was able to talk to Aaron beforehand and um, ask him if he'd be so kind as to uh, prepare a couple of tunes. And, and we, um, we, 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 we batted it around a little bit on the phone as far as what, what we could play. And um, um, we, we, came, we came across a couple of tunes that we agreed upon. And um, you know, fortunately, Aaron was able to find those, those tunes and print them out for all three of us. And um, so we, we also had we also had uh, uh, agreed to to get here um, you know about an hour and a half before the show started to, to rehearse because we, we certainly weren't going to wing it wing it um, in front of a live audience without without any rehearsal. So that's awesome. And uh, for the fans out there, people that are passionate about music, Aaron, where can they uh, look for you in, in upcoming events? Uh, where will you be performing? And uh, do you have any uh, gigs coming up where some of our Facebook fans can? Uh, so you play? Uh, well, I, I do a lot of private parties, actually. I'm in a band called Metropolis. Uh, we're mainly a wedding band uh, based out of Brooklyn, but we do, a lot of, uh, we do a lot of private parties in the city and then a lot of stuff here on Long Island. Or, you know, we went to Pennsylvania a couple weeks back. Um, so Metropolis, um, Metropolis Band, you can, you can find them on uh, Facebook, Metropolis Phase Four Orchestra. Sounds great. My daughter's yeah. getting married next year in that yeah. Long Island City. So, all right, that's good to know. Yeah, and then uh, I play locally here and there. I just uh, I'm kind of freelance locally, and uh, sometimes I'll get a text or a call day of, and like, hey, can you come and play trombone or sing or play some guitar or whatever? And you're there. And, yeah. So. All right. <laughs> it's a and great place. Awesome. And uh, and Dennis, uh, talk about um, uh, the group you play with in uh, upstate New York. So yes, I do live currently in New York upstate, and I am, I am a member of the orchestra now, which is a training orchestra for musicians who just graduated from college. That's kind of an opportunity and a loop for you to get this experience, to work with the famous conductors who are often invited and other soloists. And at this time, like I take auditions in other orchestras professional orchestras so the orchestra called the orchestra now tone and it's easy to find in the internet and we have so many performances during the whole year it's their fourth season so the orchestra is very fresh and uh, it's growing it's getting bigger reputation and looking forward for this year cool um, you know one event we're gonna be uh, pumping up next week uh, you performed last year, and I'm sure you're going to perform again this year, uh, is the Long Beach International Film Festival. And uh, uh, I expect you and Aaron to be doing your thing, and maybe we can even add Dennis when the uh, Long Beach International Film Festival comes back to Long Beach. Uh, that's true. We, we had a lot of fun, and um, we, we got to uh, play in the, uh, the, the food and, and alcoholic beverage t tasting tent, which was enormous with like a million different uh, alcoholic beverages and a million different delicious foods to sample, and uh, we we got we got to do that um, free of charge for our for, for, for performing. That was uh, kind of like the bar that we that we arranged. Okay. And it was uh, it was it was jam packed. There were thousands of people coming in and out of that that booth, and um, and that was also the uh, the night that I that I decided I was going to finally get my hernia surgery, my hernia taken care of because I was in excruciating pain that night. Oh, okay. making me remember that, having. All right. Sorry about that, Victor. <laughs> That's okay. But uh, I also Hope you feel better this this film festival. <laughs> I, I did. I, I I feel much better now. I can, I'm I'm playing pain free for the first time in, in many years. Also, um, I just wanted to say that um, um, next next Saturday in Island Park, there's a there's a great event that Aaron and I are going to be a part of for the Pump it up. for the second year in a row. It's called. Finfest. Finfest, and it's um, it's 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 been produced by a woman named Nora Finn for for many many years. I think it's maybe at least 20, 20 years running, or if not more. And it's a it's a benefit um, that's that's that benefits uh, needy children, I believe. Rocco, maybe we should uh, draw, uh, film from there. It sounds like a great uh, great thing. Yeah, and um, what we're doing, um, Nora Nora Finn is a. Um, a New Orleans, she's actually a very fine um, um, New Orleans keyboard player and um, and um, accordion player, and she, she just loves New Orleans music and Zydeco. And um, she asked um, me to put together a, 
a New Orleans second line band last year for the first time, and, and Aaron, Aaron was part of it, and uh, also a, a really fine tuba player named Jay Rosen. And um, by the end of the day, she liked it so much uh, that, that she asked us to, to book uh, the, the next year's gig, which is coming up next week. And where exactly and what time will it start? Um, actually, I, I, it's at... It's at Masson Beach in Island Park, which is on, um, I believe, 33 Waterford Street. Um, it's normally at, at Nora, Nora Finn's home. She has a very large property in, um, in Island Park, um, but, but her home uh, has been uh, lifted, and they're still, it's still in the process of uh, being lifted. So they're doing it at, at, at Masson Beach in Island Park. I, I believe it starts... Um, I'm sorry, I don't have that fact right on the tip of my tongue. But, but it's, it, so you can check it out. I'm sure it's going to be awesome next week. It, yeah, it's it's an awesome event, and and they, if, if anybody likes uh, like steamed uh, barbecues, it's, she's she I mean smoked barbecues. She does um, she has a million um, professional vendors coming by to do smoked barbecue New Orleans style, and it starts in round figures at 11 o'clock in the morning, and it goes um, in round figures to around um, uh, 11 o'clock at night, and there's a different band every hour. Nice. Okay, and, and what, what, what our New Orleans uh, second line band does is we, we play out, out in front where people um, pay to get in. Okay. And, um, and then every hour on the hour while, while there's a set chain, um, a band change going on, we, we stroll around um, nice. the, the premises um, like, like second line bands do. Okay. It's a lot of fun. And that sounds like an awesome event. And I just realized I will not be there because I'm going to be in New Hampshire with my, my mom. But otherwise, I would have loved to have been there. But it sounds like a great event. Yeah, it was a lot of fun last year. Um, it was a good chance to get out there and improvise like the New Orleans style. It was, it was a whole lot of fun. I'm looking forward to doing it again. Yeah, one of my bucket lists is uh, before I, before I uh, move on to heaven is uh, I definitely want to get down to Mardi Gras in New Orleans because I heard from that is a must. And this sounds like a taste of Mardi Gras. Yeah, I've been down to New Orleans. I've never been there for Mardi Gras, but even even then, it's it's a fun place. <laughs> All right, it's an experience worth having. All right, so we enjoyed talking to Aaron, Victor, and uh, Dennis, and uh, the men and music, and uh, we hope that you're gonna enjoy them uh, playing because they're three amazing musicians.